Hi everybody again. Today I'm just going to do a little tiniest bit of sewing. What I'm going to do, I've been working more on this, I've seen this on my blog the other day. Um, the first foot on my blog it was just that, that was all that was done. But then I've been adding applique petals to it. So what I want to do, I've already edged these with chain stitch in one colour. So I'll pull the camera in. I don't want it to blur though, but on a plus I also got a habit of moving the thing out of the way when I'm too close in. Um, the green one's edged with pink chain stitch and the pink one's edged with green chain stitch. So I'm just going to do an edge of green around that pink as well. So it'll be double edged, okay, pink and green. And off camera, I won't do it on camera because it takes longer than you think when you're doing a video. I don't want them to last stages. I'll be doing a pink one round there later tonight. But I wanted to show you, uh, this is a wonderful book. It's called The Shining Cloth, um, Dress and Adornment that Glitters. Um, I've had this for a long time. My husband bought me it for my birthday once. And in here, it's got a close-up, a really good close-up of traditional Indian embroidery. And I just wanted to show you how these things are edged like three, four times to expand the shape. So that's probably, when I first started embroidery on a learning level, like, oh, I don't know, 20 years ago, I don't know, pass, that's when I first encountered this double edge um, possibility. So when it was in work like this that I was shown, but this is really beautiful. But look at the images in here. Just It's just marvellous anyway. So that's what I wanted to show you that. So I'm gonna put that away. Um, I've also got another book out here that I'm going to show you tomorrow because I'm going to do a bit more doodling tomorrow. I think it's better to doodle on camera because it makes me doodle and practice is always a good thing. So I'll just find a needle, thread my needle. So I'm going to go around that with green Anna and I'm using stranded cotton. So this is stranded cotton. I wind it on cards mostly and I want to use two strands now. <sighs> I don't want to offend anybody because most of you may know about this but I know that when I've done classes quite a few people don't know about this and they say that they're so glad that I told them. Your stranded cotton comes in six strands, this is just one strand, I'm going to wind that back on because I want two strands today and I'm not going to fold it over and use it double because I wanted to say something about this. If you're using stranded cotton the best thing to do um, is to separate it okay so I want two even if I wanted all six I would do this I would separate them all first so you pull off one okay pull off two and if I wanted all six like I say I would separate them all I'll put these back on my card and then you rejoin them before you thread your needle and it makes your stitches lie so much flatter um, it just looks more professional. You don't get as much of a twist in the threads if you separate them and then rejoin them. Okay, so I'm now going to thread this needle, which I think may be a little bit big, but we'll see how we go. And I'll put a knot in the end of these two. And I'll just do this chain stitch around here for you. What day are you getting this? Friday. What will I be doing on Friday? I'll probably be spending too much money sitting drinking coffee hopefully outside in the sun while my husband goes off somewhere with his camera taking pictures of anything that moves and anything that doesn't move um, but no I'm hoping to have a really good time because our son's coming with us as well so that'll be nice to spend some time with him so I'm going to start at the side I always try and start at the side right next to the pink okay and literally just chain stitch neatly and precisely all around this edge to give it a double edge okay so the next video you get tomorrow will be Saturday and you can guarantee that I'll be having a panic attack I'm so nervous about Saturday I was all very blase and cool about it until recently but now it's getting nearer it's getting quite um, scary and you wouldn't believe all the stuff I've got to take with me. 
so much stuff. So literally just really neat. They're not exceptionally tiny, but they're tiny, but they're, they are quite small. And just continue around there. I told you that I move out of the way. Turn my hoop around. All my work's mounted anyway for uh, London. Everything's ready really, apart from packing everything up. Um, and when I come back on Monday, I'm travelling back on Sunday, but when I post my blog on Monday, it will probably be pictures from the workshop on Saturday and things related to that, like things I've been doing here before I went, you know, that I've had to like keep to myself. So, we've got that to look forward to, or not, as the case may be. still we're on six minutes so it does take some time I'm looking forward to working on this tonight actually I'm gonna try and develop these in a big way I shouldn't say that should I because I'm setting myself up to, to fail where I don't have new year's resolutions because I avoid setting myself up for failure but I do have big plans for all of these um, Let's hope. So and that's my final one and I finish off by just going into the one that started it off. Okay. I do like that. I really do like that. If I pull it in too much though it might blur. It's finding its focus hopefully. So I can't tell if that's blurred from looking at my viewer. I'm really hoping it isn't. Maybe I should pull out a bit more. That's how it looks. Really, really worth that extra, extra run. It's really nice. I'm not even sure that this will develop into a full flower. It may stay as a partial flower. But you'll have seen this on my blog anyway on Tuesday of this week, I think, because that's my plan to put it on tomorrow. Okay, so I'm going to doodle for your next video tomorrow.